Welcome back everyone once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to take a look at the newest vehicle edition for season 10, British Columbia. This highly anticipated vehicle is huge, literally, and also boasts some impressive qualities as well. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, without wasting any more time, let's jump into this and check it out. Replacing the 953 model in 2005, the Kenworth 963 upgraded its cab but held true to the integrity of the 953, fitting with the Cummins ISX, Clark Dana 7-speed transmission, and large, super-wide tires, the 963 is said to be able to move 260 tons with a relative low ground pressure. With its impressive size, this truck's applications are primarily for heavy-duty oil field support and desert off-road hauling. In SnowRunner, the Kenworth of course keeps its place as a prime mover, but it's much more versatile than in real life. As one of the largest and most heavy vehicles in the game as of Season 10, the Kenny boasts some impressive features, and yet it does have a few things that can hinder it as well. So let's get started and check out some of the bad news first, shall we? Breaking into our downsides list at the number one spot, sporadic power and hauling. There have been a lot of success stories while hauling heavy loads with the Kenny, and others not so much. Making this one as brief as I can, at times the Kenny's power seems sufficient, and others it feels lacking. I believe the times its power seems sufficient are those that don't have a lot of weight being pulled behind it via hitch trailer. However, I have witnessed axle lockups with just one frame add-on. Some of those add-ons would be the extended fuel tank add-on and also the new large crane as well. Downside number two, long wheelbase. It's true that having a long wheelbase can be very advantageous for balance at times. Yet in conjunction with our following downside here, it can get you caught up despite having 71 or 69 inch tires. Simply put, faster changing terrain will cause issues and perhaps prompt you to bust out the winch. Downside number three, potential frame hangups. Keeping this downside short, after briefly touching on this subject on the previous downside, after inspection of its collision model, I really don't think much needs to be said here. Even 71 inch tires don't really matter when you're that close to the ground. I've been hung up on rocks, roots, and rapid changing terrain more than I like to be. Even though it's not much to be said here on this downside, it's probably one of the biggest flaws of the Kenworth. Downside number four, maneuverability. Later, we will learn just how heavy this vehicle is, but the size is immense compared to most vehicles in the game currently. While this can be great because bigger vehicles generally do better in tough conditions, yet it also comes at the cost of maneuverability. I'm not saying it's too big to run down smaller trails, but just take some time because you might have to finesse this one in some areas. And finally, wrapping up our downsides with the number five spot, fuel consumption. To close out the downsides list, I put this one in last place because, well, I don't feel it's too big of an issue when we check out the other side of the coin on our pros list. However, most of the time the vehicle's engine is completely stressed, hence the wheel lockups, forced into low gears, and inability to stay in high gear. This essentially renders the Kenworth in a state where its sustained fuel burn values are much higher than we would like to see. Having very little power to weight overhead causes vehicles to burn more fuel because the vehicle has to simply work harder much more often. A good example of this is the Pacific P12. Before we jump into the upsides, I must mention I did a lot less nitpicking on this one than usual, but one of those additions I would say that could be on the nitpicking list would be chained tires. But let's be real here, the last snow map that we had in SnowRunner is Maine, if you consider that a full snow map, of course. Anyways, enough of the bad news, let's check out some good qualities here. Here are the pros for the Kenworth 963. Coming in at our number one spot for the pros list, power, all wheel drive, and differential locking. Another season and two more exclusive engines hitting the top 10 on the power scale. 
At 265,000 torque, the Wanderer engine is very strong, and at times, even under heavy weights, it has surprised me. One of the best qualities would be its switchable all-wheel drive and always-on diff lock, just like the Pacific P12. Early on the PTS, upon switching off all-wheel drive, its front axles were only powered. However, that has been changed and I think that is wonderful. The reason it's such a good asset on trucks with lower power to weight is the ability to toggle off all-wheel drive and force power to the axles that have most of your weights on them. Upside number two, weight. If we're not including wheel weights, which I never have based upon the truck files, the Kenworth now is actually the heaviest vehicle in the game, which aids greatly as grip is concerned. Upside number three, tires. Speaking of grip, having one of the largest tires in the game at 71 inches for its custom tire or a 69 inch super heavy mud tire option are pretty nice to have when you add all of these good qualities up. Personally, I like to use the MSH2, but if you'd like to see a comparison on its tire options, please go check out SD1's new video on the Kenworth. Upside number four, stability and durability. While I cannot rank it among the most stable trucks in the game due to its weight characteristics, it has surprised me with and without cargo. I believe its wide wheel set and its long wheelbase helps it to retain balance. Let's also not forget that the Wanderer is a moderately good engine when it comes to damage and the Kenny overall has pretty good damage tolerances as well. Yet I don't think you'll be going fast enough to take considerable amounts of damage. Upside number five, it's the most versatile heavy truck. One of the most surprising upsides is add-on capabilities. It's not far-fetched to say that it's the most versatile super heavy truck in the game, having combinations of add-ons that no other trucks have. These combinations are very well thought out, and I believe they can suit pretty much all of these roles, despite downside number one. Upside number six, range and performance. Even though the Kenworth does burn through a good amount of fuel, I don't think it's such a big deal due to how much fuel it can actually call upon. Having one of the largest fuel tanks in the game and a roof rack as well, fuel has not even been an issue and its range seems really great. Another thing we must touch on is its performance, even though it does have some limiters. The Kenworth has surprised me in ways I would predict a slower pace or a failure to hold a gear. I think it behooves me to at least mention that it can be very impressive. And finally, closing out our upsides list at the number seven spot, easy to unlock. Lastly, I love that it can be easily acquired on the first map with just a single mission called Quid Pro Quo. Being able to quickly unlock and play a region with a new vehicle always feels good rather than having to wait till the second map, which indeed needed to be mentioned here on our final upside. So in conclusion, the Kenworth 963 is a valuable addition to the game. I have my own reservations on what I feel a heavy class truck should be, but I'll take it for what it is. My concerns are pretty simple here pulling power, and its collision model. Season 10 is riddled with roots, and it can snag you up at any moment, and its terrain model is the highest that we have ever seen. When this vehicle first came out, and even in testing it on and off stream, one vehicle comes to mind, the Pacific P12, which you probably have seen me mention throughout this video. They are pretty similar in how they play, yet the Kenworth is larger, more powerful, and boasts many more add-ons to fit the mission of your choosing. Ranking the Kenworth on a tier list, which will be coming out at the end of the year 3 pass, I would probably say that it would fall in the S tier. It's really hard to hold down a relatively stable, versatile, large vehicle from that tier, especially when the engine is the number 2 in the game, despite its troubles we listed. Do I think that it might have caused some other trucks to lose their jobs? Potentially. But that is a topic for another time, perhaps on stream. 
So in closing, the Kenworth was highly anticipated and there could be some changes to come with custom add-ons as has been said and perhaps some fixes as well. But for the meantime, I'm going to get back to conquering Season 10 with it. Try this behemoth out and let me know what you think. I really hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective of the Kenworth 963. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is currently struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, God bless and stay upright.